All right, here it goes. Here's, here's the here's the seventy three year old grandma. Here's the seventy three year old grandma, Darlene um, Mays. All right, who allegedly ran a drug ring, so called stretching from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. And this is according to the Huffington Post right here. All right, this is the Huffington Post newspaper um, online. Caught this through the AOL. AOL blog. So this is this is a site, a so-called 73-year-old granny pot pot dealer, marijuana. Okay, okay, Oklahoma. So this is the story they're running about a 73-year-old um, grandma who sold pot and had illegal illegal um, guns or firearms. Now. This story is kind of very interesting, and you really got to check it out. They say that this is a, a ganja granny. You know what I'm saying? This granny's ganja using this Rastafarian. So Rastafari, wake up. You understand? This is how they begin this targeting. Now, I say this is targeting Rastafari, but using a roundabout way. This is using a roundabout. This is classic this is a classic so-called Luna Nutty strategy right here. Right now, you can see some of the tags. These are some of the tags right here for this particular um, this particular story right here. Right now, she she had about four pounds of pot. Now, so one of the commenters on this particular article says that. Um, this granny's ganja wasn't for glaucoma. Turns out she might have been the so-called biggest pot dealer in town. She might have been the biggest pot dealer. It says when cops kicked down the door of an elderly woman's Oklahoma home on Monday, they said they knew they'd find some marijuana. What they didn't expect was that 73-year-old Darlene Mays was packing, get this, four pounds of pot. Two hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars in cash, right, and a semi-automatic pistol and a revolver, according to the the daily the daily I guess I said news their newspaper reported this, and they said how it was a big surprise, and they say that um, so so called she was responsible allegedly or she's believed be like Eve to be like supplying like 40% of the marijuana circulating in the vicinity, which includes Tulsa and parts of Arkansas, Kansas, and Missouri. And so the police uh, chief, um, you know, the Benita police chief had told the Daily, their newspaper, um, it's an iPad-only news site, you know, she was in good shape for her age, so the marijuana doesn't have any ill effect, you know, and she probably, you know, probably gets high on her supply, you know, but she seems pretty well for 73 year year old. They say she was in great shape and everything like that. The cops allege that Mays had plenty of dealers at this 73-year-old lady. She was doing her thing. She knew the game, right? She had plenty of dealers allegedly working for her, including her son, Jerry, who was arrested Monday, accused of carrying thousands of dollars in cash. You know what I'm saying? Accused of carrying thousands of dollars in, in cash and nearly two pounds of pot that, according to them, the minority report, they say that he intended to sell. Now, um, in the May's house, cops found the supply in her bedroom, which they say reeked of weed. Notice whoever is writing this article is trying to use so-called hip, you know, hip speech, you know, ghetto speech, you know, to describe this particular case right here about this 73-year-old granny, allegedly a pot, a pot selling or, you know, pot dealing granny. A vacuum seal bag full of the stuff was found in the closet, bundles of um, 
bundles of bills labeled $15,000 were found under her box spring. They found a pipe, and um, they said they found a pipe and another bag of weed in the bathroom. A total of $200,000 in more vacuum-sealed bags in a guest room where May's grandchildren reportedly slept. All right? Now, um, they say Mays allegedly told officers that the money was for her retirement fund. And it goes on down here to state that um, she knew exactly what she was doing and supplying and exactly who's, who she's profiting from. Mark uh, Woodward, spokesman for the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics, and firearms, but they don't say all of that. The granny was charged with marijuana possession with the intention to um, uh, distribute, uh, maintaining a dwelling where drugs are kept or sold, and firearm possession in commission of a felony. Now, what's so interesting is that uh, some of the comments down here, you know, they got some people commenting on, this particular article as other articles. It's kind of funny and kind of a little interesting. But one person said something that was very curious, like, well, they're trying to make her out to be, she's the ringleader. She was the ringleader in this particular area. They only had like four pounds of pot, you know, and, you know, that's not really a whole lot, but the, like four pounds of pot. But I guess legally speaking, right, and this 73-year-old, right, she sold pot and had illegal guns in O.K., O.K., Oklahoma. Now, um, what does this really mean? You know what I mean? What does, this, what does this really mean? This means that the marijuana conspiracy, brothers and sisters, continues to go on, you know, and really... So far, they haven't really said this woman committed any crime. They didn't find no crack in her house. They didn't find no methamphetamines in her house. You understand? They said she was, she was good, you know, for her in good shape. Now, here the labeling of this article kind of shows you what the real, the bigger picture. Brothers and sisters, you know, this is about the marijuana conspiracy. This is about I and I standing, I and I ground. But first of all, getting informed, you understand, getting awake and aware of what's going on. This is why we bring this particular story to you, so you can hopefully go check it out for yourself, you know, and share your opinions about this particular story right here. Darlene May, 73-year-old, you know, just pray for, you know, pray for, for, for the lady. You know, she don't seem like she did anything wrong, nobody was killed. There was no crack, there was no mess so forth and so on, but they're making this story into a big popular story. So you're probably going to hear about it, you know, depends on if they want to pick up on this. But definitely if you hear more about this particular story, you just know what time it is, brothers and sisters. we got to step up our campaign about sacramental possession and use of the cannabosum and really become informed about you know, about what's going on right now and get informed with the law. You know, it's in the law of Jah, you're, you're the law of the King of Kings and his Christ. But anyway, you know, this is a, a American ganja story, you know, so-called gangster granny, you know, who basically doesn't seem to have really done anything by God's law that's wrong. But, you know, Babylon is fallen, it's fallen, people. Shalom Rastafari.